Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and thank you for joining me today for our How To Quad segment of the show. Today we are gonna, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do my world famous carbon prep and edging for my quads. So uh, this one right here is uh, an arm from the Hive frame. That's right, I said it correctly this time, the Hive frame. Um, I did a nice orange, very glossy uh, edging on it and it turned out pretty much damn near perfect. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I did that and how I do the carbon prep. Um, <clears throat> I have two frames that we're gonna be doing here. One is gonna be on wh in white and the other one is gonna be on orange. So the orange one is gonna be my second high frame. So I have the arms right here for the high frame. They have not been prepared. So we're gonna be taking care of those as well. And I also have a Titan X 225 frame uh, from, uh, PP3D and uh, these are the arms right here. So as you can see, they have not been prepped either. So we're gonna be going from the beginning all the way through and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. Um, some of the materials you're gonna need for this are of course paint. And um, in my case, I have finally settled on something that I find that works really well for this and that is uh, Rust-Oleum Thermoclad. This stuff right here, it is oil-based paint. You can also use lacquer, I believe, uh, but I'd stay away from anything acrylic. Uh, oil-based, it hardens really nicely, gives a nice glossy cover, and I find it sticks really well to the carbon fiber. So get yourself some of this. I have some gloss white right here that we're gonna be using, and I have some gloss orange right here. Um, I have already, as you can see, I've already used it. So uh, we're gonna be doing that pretty soon. Uh, another thing you're gonna need is some masking tape. Any sort of masking tape works, the better the quality, the better the result, and you're also going to need Need some of uh, these right here. These are uh, just blades, uh, razor blades. Get something really sharp. You might cut yourself with these, just be very careful. But uh, this is gonna come in handy in two ways. One, for cutting the tape and masking off the parts perfectly. And two, for actually removing and cleaning up the, the finish on the paint once it's done. Because um, there's always a little bit that gets left over so you can clean it off with the blade. You are also gonna need some cyanoacrylate glue, so super glue. Uh, that's just gonna reinforce the edging on the on the arms. So, oh, yes, also uh, don't forget to get some diamond tipped files. Uh, something sort of like these guys right here. So these are diamond files. I find they work really, really, really well. Uh, they take the carbon off very, very quickly so you don't end up spending a ton of time doing it and you only need to do a little bit just to break the edges. So just a quick breakdown of what the process is before we get actually going with it. So here is have the hip arm and then the first thing that I'm gonna do with all of these pieces is to break the edges all the way around them using uh, one of these diamond tip files. So I'm just gonna file it down sort of like in an angle like that just to break the edges and make it nice and smooth. After that's done, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of sandpaper around the edges that just helps the paint adhere. Then I'm gonna be putting a bit of cyanoacrylated glue around the motors and that's just to reinforce it and when you crash or hit something hard, it won't splinter the, the carbon fiber as badly. And then finally, we're gonna mask and paint. So join me in just a few seconds here while we get ready for actually sending these guys the proper way. All right guys, so you might be asking yourselves why do I have this bowl of water and what the hell is going on here and why are we looking at your crotch? Uh, quite simply, uh, carbon fiber creates a lot of dust, a lot of nasty, nasty dust that you do not want to get in your lungs. So uh, the best uh, way to handle it is to either do it under running water or on a bowl. I figured it'd be easier to show you guys on a bowl. Also, you waste less water and you'll see how dirty this bowl actually gets once I'm done. So please use some water or be safe when you're handling carbon fiber. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. Uh, the gloves, yes, of course. What the hell is the deal with the gloves? Okay, uh, one, I don't want to get any splinters or anything. I don't want to get my hands all dirty with the black stuff. Two, it keeps my hands dry and they don't get all pruny. And uh, I don't know, I just hate having pruny hands and I figured that since I'm going to be doing this for a little while, gloves are called for. So. We're about to start here with uh, the process of uh, preparing the carbon fiber. And I'm gonna start with the, one of the hive arms here. Um, so the process is actually quite simple. I'm gonna use a flat uh, diamond file right here. And I'm just gonna be scraping it along the side in a motion sort of like this. So I'm just trying to break that edge and almost like a 45 degree angle, create a chamfer right there. So make this really nice and soft. And basically all I do is I put it in the water right here and I just start going nuts at it. So <clears throat> you don't have to be too careful. You also don't have to be too overzealous. You're just trying to smooth it out. You're not trying to like, I don't know, reshape the carbon fiber or anything like that. I just wanna really quickly get that and keep going. Try to keep the parts submerged, though it's not necessary. If you keep wetting the, the file as you do this, it should be enough. I 
I'm not gonna worry about the inside parts right here where the motor screws go in and anything like that because frankly you don't really touch that area once the motor's there. It's not gonna hurt your fingers or anything like that. It's just really not necessary. So I'm just doing the outside edges right here. And uh, the hive is actually really well machined, so you shouldn't really need a lot. I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. Other drones that I've gotten in the past, other frames, have had really rough carbon fiber. So you end up getting splinters and stuff like that on your fingers, and that's not fun either. So that's another reason why I do this, because I don't like carbon splinters. I had one once in my in my finger, and it stayed there for like weeks and weeks and weeks until I had to dig it out myself with an X-Acto blade, and I don't want to do that again. So, <clears throat> okay, we're almost done here. So you just, as you go, you just check and look. You will notice a difference in how the light hits there. So you'll know that you've created a new face uh, on the edge. And you can see the width of that face against the light and it'll tell you if you're even or not. So you can always go back and uh, fix it up. Okay guys, so we have just finished breaking the edges on the arms for both the uh, Titan X and the Hive, and uh, the edges feel much smoother now. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it there, but there's now a bit of a chamfer there and uh, everything feels nice and smooth. I could probably go a little bit further, but it's not necessary. It's really just to make it a little bit nicer on the hands and not and get rid of any splinters. So uh, now we're gonna do the plates. So let me just grab the plates here and I'm gonna show you guys uh, what we're gonna be doing. So I have both of the plates here. This is the bottom plate from the Hive and uh, this is part of the bottom plate from the from the Titan X. Uh, it's not really important, but I'm just gonna, I just wanna show you guys and highlight some of the things that I'm gonna be doing. So I am gonna be, of course, breaking the edges all around the perimeter of the plates on both of them, so perimeter all the way around. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the screw holes or anything like that. The only other thing that I'm that I'm really gonna make sure to get really are the strap hoops right here. These tend to be a little bit sharp, so uh, any sort of impact and uh, your 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 battery strap gets pushed against that very sharp edge and it'll like make a little nick and then the next time it happens, it'll probably just cut it right through. So I find that just uh, breaking the edges all the way around here, including the little curves Right here and making it smoother around uh, prevents you from breaking battery straps as often at least that's what I found so I'm gonna be doing that here on the inside of the Hive top uh, bottom plate and I'm gonna be doing that here as well on the on the Titan X so that's important to note another thing that I like to do as well for similar reasons is around these little uh, holes that have been uh, cut out for uh, for the purpose of using uh, zip ties for antennas or anything like that, I like to give it a quick little pass as well for the same reason. It just uh, makes it nicer and uh, it prevents breakage. So let's get going and let's get these uh, edges broken up and then we're gonna be doing a quick sanding of all the edges just the outside and then we'll get going with the masking. So let's get rocking here.
Okay guys, so we've done it. We've uh, broken the edges on all the parts and all the carbon parts by going around here and chamfering it at a 45 degree angle. So uh, just a couple pointers to keep in mind. If you are using a diamond uh, files like this one here, a little goes a long way. You don't need to do a lot because uh, these will take off a lot of carbon very quickly. So just be careful with it. Make sure you don't damage anything while you're doing this. So the next thing we're gonna do right now is just uh, run some sandpaper, roughly 600, 400 grit, it doesn't really matter, just around that area. Area and just around here and clean it off and as you can see here my bowl is now entirely black uh, so this is why you want to do this underwater and this is why containing it all into a bowl like this makes sense so let me just get some some uh, sandpaper and let's get this stuff sanded and moved on to the next phase okay guys so I went and got some 400 grit uh, wet sandpaper here because we're gonna be using it in the water and this one is gonna be even quicker all we're gonna do is just run this along uh, the edges like this all the way around and just uh, rough up the surface a little bit it just helps to glue a deer to it so it shouldn't take very long you just go all the way around the perimeter and uh, you do this for all the parts and then we're gonna wash them okay so let's just get through the sanding here Awesome guys, so we've uh, finally got there, we've done the sanding and it feels nice and smooth here. As you can see the water is absolutely filthy. So uh, the next thing we need to do is wash these guys because they're all covered in this goop as well. Alright guys, so here we have all the carbon fiber pieces after I finished sanding them down and washing them in some warm water and soap. And they all look great. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it there, but there's a very tiny bit of a chamfer on around the edges and it feels nice and smooth. And yes, I am wearing gloves again because the next thing that we're going to do is the Ciano Acrylate reinforcement of the edging around the motors and that just prevents uh, the, the separation of the layers uh, in case you hit rocks or hard things like that. So it just makes your quad last a little bit longer. I mean it won't prevent anything from snapping or breaking but it will prevent it from fraying which I, I do like. So for this step uh, you're gonna need some uh, Ciano Acrylate uh, super glue. Doesn't really matter what brand it is. Uh, I just I would stay away from the gel stuff because it's a little bit harder to apply. So we're gonna do it. Oh crap, freaking child locks. Okay. <laughs> so here we have our child proof uh, super glue. And here we have all the parts that we're gonna be doing. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the top and bottom plate. That stuff doesn't seem to really be affected as much by fraying and I don't seem to hit it as often. But the arms are all gonna receive the treatment. So let's get started here. This is actually pretty simple. <clears throat> we're just gonna grab a little bit of cyanoacrylate and put it on the tip of our fingers and then just uh, rub it around the edges here, being careful not to get too much of it on the face. If you do get some of it on the face, you can just wipe it with your palm like this, if you're wearing gloves, of course. Uh, so you can just wipe it with your palm like this and you usually will get it off pretty well and uh, you can usually chip away at it if you need to because it doesn't stick that well to the top because it's so smooth, at least that's what I've found. So we are going to be working with super glue so please be careful, don't glue your fingers, don't glue your stuff together and I will not be held responsible for you hurting yourself or gluing your arms in funky ways or anything like that. So please be careful. So here I'm just going to put a very tiny dab on the tip of my finger, very tiny. And uh, I'm just going to rub it on to the, to the end of the arm right here, very carefully. You don't want to put a lot, just enough to coat it. We're going to put a second coat on it later, so you don't need a lot, you just need enough to get it going. Get a thin coating on, put another little drop. And then you keep going and I'll go the opposite way now, I'll come back this way. So just like that I cleaned up some of the edges and you can see that the carbon fiber is now kind of shiny over there 
Um, that just uh, that's the CN accolade there, and it's going to be doing its thing. So this arm here is pretty much ready to go and coated. I'm going to do one more coat after I let it set for about 10 minutes. So we're just going to very quickly here coat the rest of the stuff, let it sit. We'll do it one more time, and I'm not going to show you guys that stuff. I'm just going to show you guys when it's done. So after we do the edging here, we are going to be doing uh, the masking and getting ready to paint. So stick around. It will only take a sec. Okay guys, so there we have it. Um, I just finished coating all the arms with the Sienna Arcolade. You can see there it's uh, much shinier now. And uh, <clears throat> so these have been, I've done the first coating and I'm gonna do one more coating in about 20 minutes, but I'm gonna skip ahead on that part to show you guys what I do next, which is the masking. So these have been reinforced now and uh, they shouldn't chip away, they shouldn't fray as easily. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, set up the, um, set up the tape on it and then trim around it very nicely and then I'll show you guys how to do the spraying properly. So uh, let's check back in just a few seconds. So I've left these arms to cure overnight and uh, now you can see here the edging is, uh, the protection on the edging caused by the CN Accolade makes it a little bit shinier than the rest of the carbon fiber. So uh, all of these have been protected and I'm pretty happy with how they turn out. Uh, I did let them set for a full 24 hours before I do the next step and uh, that's just good to make sure that it has hardened fully and cured fully. Um, the next thing we're going to be doing is uh, going over the surface which is a bit rough, it's not quite nice yet with the uh, a diamond file just to clean it up and then the 400 grit uh, sandpaper, wet sandpaper again to smooth it all out again. Uh, remember guys, in painting uh, about 80% of it is surface prep. So making sure the surface is clean, making sure that it has been sanded down perfectly and all that uh, will go a long way towards giving you a very good result on your paint job. The other 10% basically is application and the other 10% is patience. Uh, so waiting the 24 hours for everything to cure properly, uh, waiting in between your coats and letting it cure entirely before removing the tape. Uh, that sort of thing is going to go a long way towards making your uh, your finished result something awesome. I mean, you can see here on the high frame how the orange is like pretty nice and glossy. So I'm very happy with how that turned out and I'm going to show you guys how to do exactly that. So let me just uh, grab my tools and we will get to work at uh, smoothing this out. So for this step, I am using the water uh, bowl again for the same reason, just to keep the dust down. You could do this under the tap if you want, but if you want to save some water, just put it in a bowl and do your work in here. That way it's a little bit easier. Uh, I'm wearing the gloves again for the same reason as the last time, just to keep my hands clean and to keep them dry. And I'm going to be using the flat diamond file that I've been using so far for the edging to clean that up, as well as just a small piece of... Uh, just sandpaper, this is a wet dry sandpaper that you can use, 400 grit. Uh, so we'll get started with one of the arms here and all I'm doing is just wetting it a little bit because I'm not that worried about the dust and I'm just uh, taking a look here and looking in the light and seeing if there are any raised spots and I'm just sanding them down gently with the water. So it doesn't need a lot, Just you're just trying to even it out. And I'm applying very little pressure as well, not a lot of pressure. I'm just trying to even out any raised areas. So now we just take the sandpaper, you can wet it a little bit as well. And then we'll just go to town on the surface, make it nice and smooth. And you're just doing this to the areas where you applied the glue. Nowhere else needs this. Periodically you should look in the light and see if there are any divots or anything like that. This one is starting to look pretty good. Okay, and you just want to be careful not to remove too much cyanoacrylate. I ended up using uh, about three full layers of cyanoacrylate and uh, letting them dry about 20 minutes in between and then I let it all cure for a whole day. So that should be enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish cleaning up the edges here and then you guys will join me again when we are ready to start applying the masking. Drop, 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 drop,
Excellent. So I'm very happy with how these arms have turned out. I uh, sanded them down so you can see they don't necessarily have that shiny quality as much anymore. But that's actually a better surface for the paint to adhere to. And I've also uh, cleaned up some of the ridges so it should come out as a nice, very nice and smooth on uh, all the arms. So I also went ahead and washed all the stuff up in some warm soap, warm soapy water. Uh, the cleaner you can get the surface the better and I'm putting it on top of this uh, clean paper because I know that the surface that I work on here is a bit dirty and I want to get all that lint and stuff all over here. Also another thing mentioning lint is that it's probably better for you to actually let these air dry and not try to dry them with a towel or a paper towel because you'll end up with a bunch of little pieces of stuff stuck around no matter what you try to do. So my advice to you is just let it air dry, be patient. Patience is key when painting stuff. So let's get ready to do the masking. So for the masking portion, we are going to need a couple things here. Uh, of course, we're gonna need some masking tape. Uh, I just have this wide stuff here because I find that it's a little bit easier to work with and it covers a lot of area very quickly. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use. Try to use something of decent quality, not some dollar store stuff because uh, the cheaper it is, the worse it sticks and you want something that will stick really really well for what we're gonna do. So I also have a exacto blade though I'm only gonna be using this for very difficult detailed cuts. Uh, the reason being that the carbon fiber will dull this blade extremely quickly and uh, these are actually not all that sharp. What you really want to use to do most of your cuts is uh, these disposable single razor blades that you get with uh, safety razors. Um, they cut extremely well, but you do have to be careful because they are double-sided and uh, they uh, they are just awesome at, at, at this stuff. And besides, you're going to go through them very quickly. I find them to be a bit cheaper than these guys and uh, I use these guys for other stuff and again, not sharp enough. So let's get started with the masking process here. And uh, <clears throat> I am just going to do one arm to show you guys right now and then we're going to speed through this whole thing and I'll show you guys the finished product later. Okay, so we'll start with one of the hippie arms. And uh, all I'm going to do is grab some tape, and uh, I'm not going to be too exact on how I'm going to cut the tape, I'm just going to grab something that's about long enough to cover it. And then we'll just cover it like that. We'll grab one of our razor blades. We'll grab one of our razor blades here and uh, first we'll make sure that this stuff is nicely stuck on so press it down with your thumbs press it down the edges a little bit so that it starts to show the shape through the tape just like that you're starting to see the shape through the tape perfect now we're gonna take our a razor blade and we're gonna use the back edge of it the back edge that is not sharp at all and we're just gonna scrape it along uh, and push on against the edges right here now this is a technique that's uh, straight up borrowed or stolen from the skateboarding world uh, if you have skateboarded at all and you've ever put grip tape on your skateboard that's exactly what they do they put the grip tape on and then they grab like something like a screwdriver or a rasp and they go around all the edge and that like weakens the material and then you can just like rip it off we're gonna use a razor right now so all you want to do is start going against the corners here and you'll start seeing the, the tape will change color, you're starting to wear it out. You want to do that across the whole perimeter. Don't have to go too crazy, you just want to weaken the tape. You might have to bend it down a little bit and keep your finger there too. But again, be careful guys, stuff is sharp. You might be asking yourself why am I not using that blade? Again, uh, this actually has a bit of give. Uh, it bends a little bit, so I'm not applying that much pressure. I find that that ends up ripping the tape sometimes. And this won't, it just presses it down nicely. Okay. So now you can clearly see the outline of the arm and it's been well pressed down. So what we're going to do now is take our blade and start cutting around the perimeter. And 
it should just glide very easily. And you can try to make straight cuts and then come back. You don't have to try and do the contour. Making straight cuts is much, much easier. So you we're gonna clean this all up later. So right now you're just mostly concerned with removing the majority of the material here. Be careful not to cut into the carbon fiber because uh, it is possible to do that and then your blade will bind. So you always have, wanna have a little bit of an upwards angle on the blade as you glide it along the, the carbon fiber. Otherwise you will get stuck. And if you get stuck, pull back, don't keep pushing because you might cut into the carbon fiber and then it's just a pain in your ass. So just like that, we took one piece. And I can already tell that this is starting to dull. And in some instances, it might just rip off like that. And that's fine. We're gonna clean that up later as well. So that one just ripped by itself. So I'm trying to use different parts of the blade as I go down, just so that it still cuts. You're gonna feel the difference very, very quickly on how quickly these things dull. I think wood dulls quick or paper dulls quick, man, carbon fiber. And uh, sometimes you get to a curve like that, you might wanna cut across carefully like this to remove some of the excess material that'll bind on your blade all the freaking time. It's quite annoying, so get rid of that. So now I think it's probably better to go that way. So you just have to feel it out. Your, every piece is different. You're just trying to look for the easiest straight cuts that you can make. Okay, so we have our first uh, face of the arm pretty much masked and I used up about a quarter of this blade, let's say. So now I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna use the other edge because it's really nice and sharp and I'm gonna clean up all the edges because they are not perfect. There are some areas where there's like some overhang. You don't really want that. So I'm gonna clean it up and to clean it up, I'm coming in at about a 45 degree, ang uh, 45 degree angle like that. So I have them both tilted out. Let's say that this is a plane right here. This is about 45 degrees. And uh, I'm just trying to clean up as much of the little edges as I can and being very gentle not to cut the carbon fiber. It helps if you have an, an, a sort of a drag and pull motion at the same time so that you really slice through the tape instead of just yanking it. So it helps to move a little bit down as well. And you'll notice that these little burrs will start to pop up and you just keep going very gently. See, it looks pretty clean on the camera, but that's all the burrs and stuff that I'm pulling off that are excess. <laughs> if you run your finger around, you can pull off the rest of the burrs. And there we have it. So that's one of the faces. It's all pretty much covered. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go ahead and do that same process on all the stuff you see here. And we're just gonna speed right along with it and uh, we will get back with the actual spray painting because uh, we're pretty much ready to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yes, one more thing before we continue here actually. Wait. Oh yes, one more thing before we continue here actually. Try to think about how these things are gonna be put together when you are masking because uh, paint does add a bit of thickness. So if things have to fit very closely together, it's not a good idea to put paint there because otherwise you're gonna have to sand it down to get things to fit. So on the case of the height, I am gonna not coat, I'm gonna mask off these areas right here because this is where the, I don't want any paint here because this is where the straps are gonna go over and I don't want any tape around this perimeter right here because this is where they join together. Uh, same thing with the Titan X. Uh, basically, I am only gonna be doing the outside perimeter. Only the stuff that isn't really gonna have you're gonna gonna have to mesh with anything else. So this inside area here of the arms is not gonna get the paint treatment at all. So let's get through this freaking masking stuff because it's gonna take forever. But uh, to you guys, it'll only be a sec. All right guys, so there you have it. <clears throat> Here's one of the arms all masked and ready to spray paint. So I'm just gonna finish getting the rest of this stuff uh, masked and we will meet back with some spray paint and get the stuff on the st stuff. Okay. All right guys, so we have the arms pretty much all, um, all masked out. All I'm gonna do now is uh, clean up the edges just a little bit more and then finish masking the rest of the components and I'll meet you guys back to spray paint this thing so it's finally painting day. We've uh, done the carbon fiber treatment by sanding it down and putting the sienna acrylate. We masked it all up and now we're ready to paint. Uh, let me just show you guys what I did here to make the painting a little bit easier on my end. <clears throat> so I've gone ahead and uh, set up each one of the pieces that I'm gonna be painting on a little hook and it's nothing more than just a piece of wire that I bent around and uh, it's just gonna hold it and I just put a hole through anywhere on the piece. You can use the holes for the screws or the holes for where the motor centers go. It doesn't really matter. As long as you get it on something, it'll just make your life a little bit easier. I also have a dirty piece of cardboard that I'm gonna spray over. Uh, you don't wanna get that stuff everywhere, so I recommend you do the same. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but today might not be the best day to paint, which brings me back to another point. When is a good day to paint? Um, you want to make sure that you're painting on a, on a warm, dry day, really, realistically, and without a lot of wind. Uh, if it's a windy day, that you might not get good even coverage. Uh, if it's too cold or too humid, the paint might dry a little bit funny. So you want to avoid that if you can. But uh, I might paint today anyway because it's not that windy and it's snowing, but I think I can keep the snow off to pieces and I'm kind of in a rush to get this stuff done. Also, not sure if you've noticed, but I'm sporting the latest in FPV chat 
fashion. If you want some yourself, go check out dirtdiver.com or come hang out at fpvchat.slack.com. So let's get down to some painting. So we're about ready to do our first coat of paint and I selected just uh, the top plate from the Hive to do the first coat. I've got my Rust-Oleum uh, orange that I'm gonna be painting it with. And the first thing you wanna do is of course shake this thing very, very, very well. And we're gonna apply just a very thin layer as just almost like a primer layer. Then we're gonna come back and hit it again. I'm probably gonna do about three coats of this stuff. Uh, make sure you wear a mask because this stuff is nasty. You don't want to get it in your lungs. So let's get down to painting. So just like that guys, that's all you really need. You just need a very light coat for the first coat. So let's get all this stuff coated for the first coat, let it dry, and then we'll come back and do it again. So we just got the first base coat down and I'm letting it dry now for about 20 to 30 minutes. My, the Rust-Oleum says that you should reapply the second coat within an hour. Um, I tend to do about half an hour. Check your paint can, read the instructions, they'll tell you exactly how much time you have. So we'll do this a couple more times and then we'll be ready to clean up the paint, remove all the other stuff once it cures. There you have it guys, three coats about 20 minutes apart and uh, you will end up with something that looks pretty much like this. Now you gotta let it cure for 48 hours and then we're gonna peel this thing up and clean it up. So see you in 48 hours. So it's been about 48 hours and now we're about ready to check out the fruits of our labor. So uh, I'm gonna pick a couple parts here and we're gonna start peeling them off. And I'm just gonna use an X-Acto blade to like lift off the tape and uh, peel it up carefully and just pull it right off. And you might notice that there's a little bit of bleeding or anything like that, but don't worry, we're gonna clean that up in the next step. Yeah, be careful not to scratch the carbon fiber while you're doing this also. And try not to touch the sides, even though it's been about 48 hours, it, it's not entirely dry yet, and I kind of want that. I want it to be a little bit malleable for the next step where we're gonna run, uh, we're gonna run a blade on it to uh, clean off the excess. So boom. So there's our first piece, and as you can see, it turned out pretty much damn near perfect. Uh, nice glossy finish. None of it really bled over onto the top, which is great. It looks pretty nice. So we're gonna clean this one up afterwards. We'll just leave it here for now, and then we'll go ahead and just remove all of the tape from the rest of them here. This is probably the most satisfying part of the whole thing. But I'm gonna accelerate this thing ahead so that you guys can see the next step, which is what really matters, which is uh, actually cleaning up the edges after we're done. Okay, so 
we've actually gone ahead and removed all the tape and you guys really can see that it's turning out pretty damn awesome. And for a lot of you this would be good enough and you can stop right here, but if you take a closer look at the edges right around here, you'll see that there's a bit of uh, some nasty stuff, just some almost like some burrs and that's just excess paint that uh, got caught between the tape and the surface that we, we masked. So, what I like to do, and this is not a step that anybody else needs to take unless you really want this thing to really shine, is to take the our friendly little razor blades again and then run them along along the edges of the of the carbon fiber and the paint where it meets and just removing that off. So here I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. And then I'm gonna do it to all these pieces right here and uh, you guys will check out and see the final result of what it looks like. So, you see there? I'm just gonna drag the blade very slowly and carefully and you'll see that a little bit of orange stuff is right there and that will help it look a lot cleaner when you're done. So you just run it along, careful not to catch the carbon fiber itself. Just like that. We'll clean off one piece and you can rub your finger around the edge now to like break off the excess. And that's basically how we're gonna clean up all the edges on all these pieces right here. So I'm just gonna accelerate time one more time and we'll get this thing done and I'll show you guys the final result.
Hey guys, unfortunately, um, battery died while I was doing the blade section of the cleanup here, and uh, I don't have the full footage there, but I hope you get the idea of what I'm doing here. It's basically just a 45 degree angle type of thing, and then scraping it with the, the very sharp uh, razor, not these kinds, the, the actual proper double-sided razor. And then that cleans off the corners right here. I hope you can see well. And you get left with this very nice clean edging all the way around and this nice glossy finish around all the pieces. So you can see here, here are the white pieces. Um, a little, I also cleaned these in uh, hot soapy water after I finished to get rid of all the, the burrs. So you might want to do that after you finish as well. And these are pretty much ready to go and ready to be mounted. So I hope you guys learned something here today and remember that this takes a lot of work and there's a lot of patience. So if you prefer to use the marker method or whatever, go for it. But if you're looking for nice glossy edging, this is how I do it. Uh, if you have a better way to do it, I'd love to hear about it. Drop me a comment or come find me at the fpvchat.slack.com. And I hope this was helpful to you guys. So please subscribe to the channel for more of this awesome content and I'll catch you next time.